Hey everybody, it's Lynn Hayes. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you're very welcome. Every week I post a video to give you all the astrological information that you need to have a really great week. Let's get started. The first thing I'd like to talk about this week is the fact that we have a new moon coming up in Virgo. So you probably know this already, but just to recap, when the moon is new, astrologically the sun and the moon are conjunct in the sky. That means they're fused, they're like partners. As the moon, which travels more quickly than the sun, as the moon begins to approach the sun, the sky is actually dark. We don't see a moon. So the moon is invisible to us. And that, you know, we call that the dark of the moon. When we're in that dark of the moon state, in terms of the lunar cycle, that's the time when we start letting go. We start shedding old things that we no longer need in order to prepare ourselves for what's coming at the new moon. This is a really good time for the three days before the new moon, which is around seven in the morning, Eastern time on September 17th. During these few days, it's a really good time to do a, maybe a self-assessment, see what is it that you're ready to let go of before the new moon. When we have a Virgo new moon, it's a very good time to create a plan and a strategy. Virgo seeks perfection and order in the midst of chaos. And the way that Virgo inspires us to do that is by looking at the whole picture and taking every item to see, does this belong? Does that belong? You know, is there something here that I don't need anymore. Let's just discard it. Therefore, it's a really good time to clean up your office or clean out your closet. There's a sense of sort of getting rid of the old so that the new energies have a place to come into the picture. With Virgo, there needs to be a clarity of purpose. A Virgo new moon is a really good time to set intentions. Of course, all new moons are a time of new beginnings. They're a good time for planting seeds, both in the ground and seeds of intent. Virgo in particular, because Virgo does need to create that order, and Virgo does need that clarity. So in order to get that clarity, sometimes it's really useful to use, you know, organizational tools. I don't know about you, I'm always looking for just the right planner and exactly the right productivity app and what's going to help me to be organized. And I have a big plan for this Virgo new moon uh, to start something new in that regard, and maybe you will too. And especially Especially now when we're living in a time that feels rather chaotic, the Virgo influence can help us to find that order, that sense of internal balance. Virgo also inspires us to create balance in the mind-body-spirit system, you know, where we're feeding the mind, we're curious, we're interested, we're also taking care of our body through the foods that we eat, the exercise that we get, and we're also taking care of our spirit through meditation, through through walking in the woods, anything that helps us to feel a greater sense of peace. This new moon has an interesting and challenging square to the lunar nodes. The nodes of the moon are astronomical points that mark where the path of the moon crosses the path of the sun. So there's the ascending node and the descending node. You don't need to remember this, but we call the ascending node the north node, and we call the descending node the south node. The north node points us towards our future destiny. The south node says, here's where you've come from. The south node in some forms of astrology, particularly Vedic astrology, the south node has a reputation for being evil and debilitating, and that's because the south node can sometimes hold us back. It pulls us back towards our past, towards what's comfortable, towards what we've come to depend on when life seems uncertain. The North Node being in the future, we've never seen it, we've never been there, and the signs are always the polar opposites. Right now we have the North Node in the sign of Gemini, the South Node in the sign of Sagittarius. The South Node in Sagittarius is holding us back to beliefs, to philosophies, which ideas and which ideals are giving us life meaning. And that's an interesting placement right now for the South Node because our ideas and our ideals are having to change. We're living in a new world. It's a different world. We have to leave a lot of those ideas behind. So the North Node in Gemini, Gemini is less about philosophy 
and more about learning and being curious and everything becomes more interesting. So with the North Node in Gemini, we're being pulled more in that direction to learn more about many different things. Don't just hold on to your religious philosophy that you've had since you were five, but maybe there's some different ideas, some new ideas that you can take in as well. The lunar nodes are in a square to the new moon. The lunar nodes are what make a lunar event an eclipse when the nodes are conjunct the sun or the moon. So in this case, they're in a square. It's a challenging aspect. So there still is a sense of fate and a change of destiny. There's a sense that a choice needs to be made, that an alternative will be presented under this new moon. If you watched my video last week, you may remember that the sun was forming a harmonious trine to Jupiter. Just to recap, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn are all conjunct in the sky in Capricorn. They've been creating a lot of oppression and contraction uh, since January when Saturn and Pluto came together. So the sun right now is in the sign of Virgo and last week made a trine to Jupiter, which is a very harmonious aspect to a very harmonious planet. Jupiter being the planet of good luck and good fortune and optimism, that really shines a light into the confusion and darkness that some of us are experiencing. The sun is going to continue its journey harmonizing in a trine with Pluto and then with Saturn this week. So throughout the week we have this enhancement of optimism an enhancement of our ability to see the bright side, which I don't know about you, but I could certainly use a little bit more of that. And we will have that this week, brighten up our new intentions and our, our thoughts for this new moon. I'd like to give you a little retrograde update. Mars turned retrograde last week, Jupiter turned direct. So we had one more planet turn retrograde for three days. We had seven planets retrograde. The absolute peak, we reached peak retrograde. And once Jupiter turned direct, we went back to six, and it's going to keep going down from here. So we have reached the top of the mountain. It looks from the astrology like things are going to start to get easier. However, the disruptions that were formed will likely take a while to come back into balance. On Monday, September 14th, after this video is posted, the moon is in Leo and the moon is harmonizing to Mars. So that gives us a lot of good fire. When the moon is in Leo, it helps us to find more joy in our life. It helps us to be more optimistic, to look on the bright side. Leo is ruled by the sun. There's a sense of the sun shining, the sun coming out behind the clouds. So the moon is in Leo. It's going to harmonize in a trine with Mars. And remember, Mars has just turned retrograde and it is virtually stationary in the sky. It's hardly going to move for the next few weeks. So there's a lot of energy. This Mars energy is so active with the sun in a trine to Mars. It really helps us to channel that Mars energy more productively. When Mars energy gets blocked, we start to have explosions and rage. And, you know, I have clients who say, I never get mad because when I do, I just explode and, and I don't like it. And that's what happens when Mars backs up. In an ideal, healthy Mars, we say, I'd like to do this. We are able to do that. And then there's never any anger. There's never any rage. But typically, the universe does support our, our desires and helps us to achieve our goals. On Monday, with the moon and a trine to Mars, it's a really good time to think about these goals and these ideals and these wishes that you'd like to manifest. I was speaking before about the sun, which will harmonize in a trine to Pluto. That will actually culminate on Monday as well. So we have not only the sort of joyful fire of Leo and Mars, we also have the power of the sun in a trine to Pluto. Pluto, the power of transformation, and the sun sort of enlightening and bringing a fresh new energy into the situation. And that's all part of the new moon in Virgo. So it's a really good week to think about how you'd like your life to unfold from here. Then on Tuesday, September 15th, the moon will enter Virgo at 2.37 p.m. Eastern time. Please adjust for your own locality. 
We have Venus in the sky right now in the sign of Leo, and that's been a very social place. When Venus, the planet of relationships, is in the sign that seeks to create more joy, it's a very good time for relationships and for having joyful and happy experiences with other people, hopefully safely in today's times. Now this week, Venus is being squared by Uranus. Uranus, the planet of radical change, individuality, autonomy, doing things your own way. So you can imagine when Venus, the planet of relating and love, is squared by Uranus. Now you can imagine when Venus in Leo, the planet of love and relationships in the sign of joy, is squared by Uranus, the planet that just wants to us to do our own thing and just break out of any conventions and not do what we're expected. It can be disruptive for relationships. So we're going to see that on probably Monday, definitely Tuesday, and a little bit on Wednesday as that aspect starts to fade. Then on Wednesday, there aren't any real planetary alignments, but the Virgo moon will oppose in a 180 degree angle Neptune on its way to meet the sun for the new moon. Often when there are no alignments in the sky on a particular day, the lunar alignments are more evident. With the Virgo moon opposite Neptune, that's a very dreamy aspect with a lot of imagination. It can be very inspirational. It can be a very good time for meditation, for spiritual pursuits, for journaling. All of those sorts of things are highly favored when the moon is opposite Neptune as it is on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we have the new moon. So the energy for the new moon will have been building for the previous two or three days, especially once the moon went into Virgo. Thursday, when the moon is new, we can use that opportunity to craft this new plan, this new structure, this new way to organize our lives for greater satisfaction, greater happiness, and also take some time because Virgo does really love rituals of self-care. The moon enters Libra at about 2.55 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, September 17th. As the moon begins to move through Libra, it's going to be opposite Chiron, which will be late in the day Eastern time, so adjust for your own locality. These lunar aspects last for maybe six hours, so they're very fast moving. When the Libra moon opposes Chiron late in the day Thursday, early in the morning Friday in Europe, there could be a heightening of emotional sensitivity, a sense of anxiety perhaps, or you know, some old feelings, some old sadness, maybe you don't even know where it comes from. But that's what Chiron does, it kind of brings up those feelings so that they can be released. And the Libra moon is very gentle. Under the Libra moon, we crave those experiences of, of inner balance, internal balance, and greater harmony. On Friday, the moon is going to continue moving through Libra, and as it does that, it's going to start to square all those Capricorn planets. So from around noon Eastern time, the moon starts to square Jupiter, which can be a positive time emotionally, except that Pluto's right behind it. And that's just going to be an hour or so, and they're all lumped in there together. So you can't say, oh, that's the moon square Jupiter, that's the moon square Pluto. You're not gonna feel it. You're just gonna feel a lot of emotion, possibly, especially if you're sensitive to the moon. So when the moon is squaring Pluto, there can be a sense of intensity, and then the moon will square Saturn, which can feel somewhat sad, a little depressed, sometimes sort of like things are futile. All of this is going to pretty much end by noon on Friday Eastern time. And that takes us to the end of the week. So I did want to think about a theme for the week to sort of wrap it all up in a nice little package for you. And really the theme for the week is using the energy of the new moon to create organizational structures that will support us as we work to create order and a new way of living our life that's going to better serve our current situation. I think that's a good place to end this video. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions or comments comments or any information you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week.